The Columbia Broadcasting System presents a new comedy. My Friend Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. With John Brown as Al and Life Erickson as Richard. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. working girls in this country who, for reasons of economy and the desire for companionship, live with a roommate. My roommate is Irma Peterson. You couldn't want to meet a sweeter and more generous person. Irma will lend you a nylon, she'll lend you a perfume, she'll lend you money. You know, by the way she acts at times when I'm convinced that she's loaned her mind to someone? <laughs> For instance, the other day I was reading the newspaper and I said... Irma, look at this. A man is going over Niagara Falls in a barrel. And Irma said, Gee, if you felt that way, why'd you get married in the first place? <laughs> she didn't even go to college. But Irma, strangely, is the least of my problems. Right now, I'm involved in that fascinating feminine version of fishing. I got the man I love on the hook, and I don't know how to land him. See, wouldn't it be wonderful? Instead of just being his secretary, I'd be Mrs. Richard Rhinelander the third. Irma. Uh, yes, Jane. Look at this society page. Richard's family is all over it. His mother was guest at a luncheon. His Aunt Cornelia was given a tea by the ladies' auxiliary. His father was present at a dinner given in his honor. Well, no wonder they have so much money they never have to buy their own food. <laughs> It all looks pretty hopeless. Gee, Jane, honey, don't be so depressed. Oh, I can't help it. Frankly, I think I'm reaching for the stars. After all, I'm sure Richard's family wouldn't be crazy about the thought of their only son marrying a girl who works. Well, that's easy to overcome. How? Quit your job. <laughs> oh, I'm a... <laughs> honey, I've got to figure something out. Well, I'm glad Al and I have so much have no such worries. You see, ours is a perfect arrangement. How do you mean? Well, we have no financial problems. Our relationship is very simple. I have Al, and Al has me, and we both have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm too busy to argue the point, so I'll just go along with you. Come in. Hello, Richard. Hello, Jane. I've got to talk to you. Uh, will you excuse us, Irma? Oh, certainly. I understand. Couples like privacy. Gee, you should see how furious Al gets when the cops say move along. <laughs> Richard, you seem so upset. What is it? Jane, I, I couldn't wait until I saw you. There's something we must discuss. Now, here, read this, this Broadway column. Now, let me see it. What young society stockbroker was seen with what young secretary at what nightclub on what evening? <laughs> Richard, what's passing? Three out of four? Now, uh, Jane, I, I am not concerned with just this item. Now, it's the general idea that my family detests cheap publicity or notoriety. And if there's anything that would kill our chances of getting married, it would be that. Oh, but, but, but Richard, remember me? I'm just a poor working girl. How'd I get my name in the paper? Who knows from Jane Stacy? Well, Jane, I, I just want you to be doubly careful. Now, remember, no publicity of any kind. Oh, Richard, I promise. And believe me, I'll keep my name out of the newspaper if I have to die anonymously. Can we come in? Oh, sure. Come on in. Look, Jane, it's Al. Hi, Al. Hello, Al. Say, why do you look so upset? Got business worries. I was just informed I only got two more weeks before my unemployment insurance runs out. <laughs> well, Al, you can always get a job, can't you? Kitty, I came up here to be comforted, not insulted. <laughs> can comfort you. Richard and I have our own problems. Yes, come on, Jane. We'll discuss it over a cocktail. Okay, fine. So long, Al. Be back soon, honey. 
What do you mean, problem? Has Jane got trouble? Well, I think so, Al. You see, Richard's family have their names all over the society page. They're rich and social, and they know all the people in the horsey set. Poor Jane, she doesn't even know any horses in the people set. <laughs> you know, Chicken, I like Janie. And I hate to see her lose a swell guy like Richard. But, Al, how can we prevent it? Only one way. We gotta get Jane some sensational publicity. Publicity? Why, certainly. Richard's family gets publicity on the society page. We'll get Jane's name on the front page. That'll put her in solid with the family. Solve everything. But how can we do that, Al? We need help. From who? There's only one man who can help us. Oh, who, Al? Who but... Hello, Joe. Al, got a problem. How can I get publicity for a girl? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. No good, Joe. Yeah, I know what it did for Lady Godiva, but they got traffic cops nowadays. <laughs> what else? Huh? Uh-huh. 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 Great. Gotcha. Irma got just the thing. Hand me that Daily Gazette. Well, oh, here, Al. Let me see. Oh, here we are. Daily Gazette Bath and Beauty Contest. Girls, your chance for fame and fortune. Mail in a picture of yourself in a bathing suit to Miss McHugh, contest editor of the Daily Gazette. Married women are in- ineligible. Ineligible? That's a lie. I've talked to many married women, and I can understand every word they say. <laughs> Please, chick. Now, this is what we do. We send in Jane's picture and enter her in the beauty contest. Jane in a beauty contest? Why, certainly, honey. <laughs> Can you imagine the expression on Richard's family's face when they open up the paper and see Jane's picture in a bathing suit? Oh, Al, that's wonderful. And Jane's so pretty. I know she'll win, and then after she wins, she'll become a big Hollywood star. Could be. Jane may even win an Academy Award, and she'll bring an Oscar home. Oh, Al, we're doing the wrong thing. Why? If she brings Oscar home, Richard will walk out as sure as you're born. Chicken, Oscar is a statue. Now, get out that picture album. We've got to find a great picture of Jane. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Tell me, what are you doing with that picture album? Oh, well, we're trying to find a picture to enter in a beauty contest. Picture in a beauty contest? <laughs> Beauty is not found in pictures. Beauty is found in the trees, the birds, the flowers. <laughs> What's that picture there? That's Irma in a bathing suit. You know something? I've been wasting too much time in the woods. <laughs> Al, you are a lucky man. Beauty in a woman is such a priceless thing. In my youth, I searched the continent for a perfect woman. Finally, I found her. She was gorgeous. A perfect face, perfect figure. I was broken up for days. Why? Her husband was a wrestler. He broke me up for days. <laughs> Tell me, does Jane know you are putting her in beauty contest? Oh, no, she doesn't. You see, Professor, we always like to help Jane with her problems. Uh, hey, you know, Chicken, there isn't one decent picture of Jane in this album. But there's a great one of you in a bathing suit. What are you going to do, Al? We're going to send in your picture and write Jane Stacy's name under it. Oh, but Al, that, that could lead to trouble. What if my picture is in the paper and someone falls in love with me? They'll have to ask my father for Jane's hand. <laughs> Chicken, we're doing a noble thing. Now write Jane Stacy on the bottom of your picture and put it in that envelope. Well, okay. Shall I enclose the picture? Well, certainly. You still got room. You could enclose the bathing suit. <laughs> Say, Professor Crow, uh, the contest closes at 5 o'clock, and this has got to be in the mail. Would you drop it in the mailbox? Certainly. It's a pleasure to deal with people like you. Goodbye. Oh, Al, isn't it a nice feeling doing things for your friends. I bet if Jane knew what we were doing for her, she'd go out of her mind. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing like doing a good deed. You know, Chicken, I feel like a Boy Scout. Uh, how about a kiss before I go? Certainly, honey. 
<laughs> what are you laughing at? No Boy Scout ever kissed like that. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Do you sound happy? I just left Richard, and it was wonderful. He was so attentive. You know, I may be counting my chickens prematurely, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he popped the question. What do you think he's going to ask you? Chicken pops the question as a standard phrase. It's used to signify the dying words of a single man. No, not yet, honey, but it looks encouraging. Yeah, but I don't understand. Irma said you had the blues about the guy. Oh, that. Well, Al, some columnist hinted about Richard and me in the newspaper, and if there's anything that could kill my chances with him and his family, it would be any kind of publicity. Yeah, well, Irma and I were thinking along... <laughs> of course, I have nothing to worry about because I have no more chance of getting publicity than the Queen of Sheba. Right, Irma? Yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> What's going on with you two? Why are you looking at each other like that? Uh, uh, can't help it. We're, uh, we're in love. Yes, with each other. <laughs> then why are you staring like that? We don't trust each other. <laughs> well, I only hope that whatever the two of you have been up to doesn't concern me. Well, I gotta wash my hair, so I leave you with two words. Goodbye. Thanks. Oh, chicken, we're in a lot of trouble. But we can still pull out. I'll tell you what to do. We got to stop the presses. You gotta go down to the Daily Gazette and talk to the editor. Well, what'll I say? Say anything. And if you have to, because it's an emergency, flirt with him. Even sit on his lap if you have to, but stop those presses. Oh, well, that's silly. If I sit on his lap, that won't stop the presses. It'll just increase his circulation. <laughs> and now between the acts of my friend Irma, it's the Sportsman Quartet and their novel arrangement of If It Isn't Love. <laughs> Secret is secret, we've got a little secret. A secret, a secret, a secret kind of secret. We're aching more to shout it to every daffodil and tell the world about it. In fact, we think we will. If this isn't love, the whole world is crazy. Daisy. With moons all around and cows jumping over, and cows are jumping all over, there's something amiss, and we'll eat our hats if this isn't love. I cannot grapple because, 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 because you're so adorable. If this isn't love, then winter is summer, autumn, spring, and fall. If this isn't love, my heart needs a plumber, and that is love. We're swinging on stars, we're riding on rainbows, we're busting with bliss, and we'll kiss your hand if this. Fifth Avenue, window shopping, daydreaming about becoming Mrs. Richard Rhineland of the Third. I can just see our wedding day. Irma will be maid of honor, and best man will be Al. 
On second thought, maybe we better elope. The best man has to carry the ring, and I don't want a pawn ticket put on my finger. <laughs> They're awfully cute, and I love them. Best friends I have in the world. Always trying to help. Oh, stop crying, chicken. Oh, well, what'll we do about Jane? It'll be so embarrassing for her and Richard when her name appears in the paper. We've got to keep it out. Don't you know any big shots? Oh, yes. Yeah. But they're all on probation. <laughs> oh. Hello? What? Huh? Daily Gazette? What's that? Jane Stacy has qualified for the finals at Atlantic City? But listen, mister. Mister! Oh. Oh, chicken, we're trapped. We got to think of how to get Jane out of trouble. Let's think. I'll try. Thought of anything yet, chicken? No, but I'm thinking. At a girl. Keep trying. How you doing, chicken? I think I'm getting a little closer. Keep trying, honey. Got any thoughts yet, honey? Al. What? Would you mind repeating the question? Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, chicken. I think I got the answer to our dilemma. I just remembered. This contest is for single girls. We'll tell them Jane is married. She'll be disqualified and they won't print the picture. Oh, that's wonderful, Al. Uh, I'll get him on the phone. Hello, Daily Gazette. Give me the department that's in charge of the bathing beauty contest. Hit chicken, you talk to him. I'll tell you what to say. Uh, hello, uh, Daily Gazette? Tell them if they plaster that picture of you wearing a bathing suit in the newspaper, they'll wind up in court, so they better not print it. If you print that picture of me in your bathing suit, I'll get plastered and wind up in court wearing a newspaper. <laughs> no, chicken. No, chicken. <laughs> Tell him you just found out that the contest is for single girls, and you are married, have a husband who works, and you have four babies. So you should be automatically disqualified, and you're sorry. I'm sorry. The contest is for single girls who should be disqualified because I've just found out that I'm a married woman with four husbands and a baby who works automatically. Hold it, chicken. Hold it, chicken. Yeah. I'll take it. Hello? Listen, Jane Stacy is married. Yeah, I got four kids. On the level. Goodbye. It's all fixed, Chicken. Jane won't get no unfavorable publicity. It's a closed chat. Oh, gee, Al, you're so wonderful. I don't know how to reward you. Oh, uh -huh. well, Chicken, you know what little Al likes. Oh, Al, you're so persistent. All right, go to the icebox and get a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> <laughs> And I can't quite describe the scene of domestic bliss that greets my eyes. Anne stretched out upon the sofa eating a hard-boiled egg. And Irma's at his feet picking up the shells. Now I know why Al calls her chicken. <laughs> Irma's always good for a hard-boiled egg. But I don't like the expression on their faces when the two of them get that angelic look I know it's time to run for the hills. But I said, Irma. Uh, yes, Jane. Did Richard call? No. Are you sure he didn't phone? No, Jane, I didn't hear the phone ring. I know if he called, he'd have sense enough to ring the phone first. <laughs> Jane, I can't understand it. Come in. Hello, Richard. What? Richard, what's wrong? You're white and trembling. Uh, maybe he's hungry. Want a hard-boiled egg, Richard? <laughs> Jane, look at this newspaper. Huh, uh, newspaper? Jane Stacy, contestant in Atlantic City Beauty Contest, eliminated upon disclosure that she is married and the mother of four children. Me? Well, finish my lunch. Think I'll be running along. You stay right where you are, Al. Richard, surely you don't believe that four children? Why, why, it's ridiculous. I haven't even left the house. <laughs> Now, Jane, 
certainly I don't believe it, but my family reads the papers. Now, how will I explain? What will I say? Well, just say that Jane isn't married and the children are four typographical errors. <laughs> Better call home and try to catch them before they read the newspapers and explain things to them. Yes, yes, Richard, that's a wonderful idea. Hello, Dad. Yes, Dad. Y- yes, Dad, I read four children yesterday. What? The morning edition said five? Oh, no, no, it's only four. Oh, I mean... (laughs) Yes, Dad. Yes, Dad. Yes, Dad. Yes, Mother. Yes, Mother. Yes, Auntie. All right, Jeeves. (laughs) Well... You know what this means. You have five phones in the house. Oh, be still, Irma. Jane, I don't know how I'll explain this to my folks. I, I don't know how we get into these things. Every time I'm with you, something happens. But, Richard, I... I There's I... no point in this talking, Jane. I'd better rush home and see what I do. Bye. My, it's quiet. <laughs> Just the calm before the storm. Irma Peterson, what have you and that... Fugitive from an honest living been up to. Oh, Jane, I, I didn't mean anything. Honest, I thought you wanted publicity, so I sent my picture and your name into the Atlantic City Beauty Contest. And then when we found out that you didn't want publicity, we had to think fast, so we gave you four children. Only four? Well, I'm glad you thought fast, otherwise I'd be leading a parade. <laughs> Well, Irma Peterson, this is the last straw. We're going right down to the Gazette, and you're going to straighten everything out, even if you have to enter that contest. Well, I showed Irma what it means to meddle in other people's business. Here we are at Atlantic City. It's strange, doesn't it? Well, I'll tell you something stranger. Irma is Miss Greater New York. (laughs) The Gazette would retract the item about my four children only on condition that Irma go through with the contest. There she is, in all her glory, walking up and down the reviewing stand. She's wearing a bathing suit, I think. (laughs) And Al is in his glory... So far, he's collected six Cupid dolls and nine boxes of saltwater taffy by putting a brick under his hat and asking the man to guess his weight. (laughs) But now a fantastic thing has happened. Irma was acclaimed the winner. She was given a large silver loving cup, and there she stands on the boardwalk at Atlantic City making her thank you speech. Thank you. Again, I say thank you. Did I say thank you? You did. Thank you. My friends, as you know, beauty is not inherited. It's something you get from your mother and father. (laughs) But I'm so happy because in voting me Miss Greater New York, I want to tell you that I will take great pride in executing my responsibility And I want to thank you again for my execution. (laughs) Hurry up, Irma. We'll miss our train. Okay. Oh, Al, honey, will you carry my trophy? Certainly, chicken. Gee, what happened? You're limping. Unfortunate accident. Dropped my hat on my foot. (laughs) And so, as we left beautiful Atlantic City, we waved goodbye. And even the waves wouldn't wave back. (laughs) When we got home, there was a knock on the door, and in came Richard. Oh, Richard, gee, it's wonderful seeing you. Now, about Atlantic City. I know, I know, Richard, I know. We had to go through with it. It was the only way to make your family understand everything about me, and now they know that I'm innocent. Oh, of course they do. In in fact, Father saw Irma's picture in the paper. Oh, no. More trouble? You said it. Father wants to meet Irma. (laughs) Well, now that Irma has won a cup and has become a celebrity, there's no living with her. She really has delusions of grandeur. 
Because that night, as I was trying to get the Atlantic City sand out of my hair, Irma said... Uh, Jean, I'm going to enter another beauty contest, but it's important that this one must be a little one. Why? Well, now that I've won this cup, I'd like to win a saucer to go with it. <laughs> well, with a cup and saucer, quite a dish is my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma was produced and directed by Cy Howard. The night script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. <laughs> Remember, next week, instead of dialing your telephone to listen to your best friend... Dial your radio to this same Columbia station, same time, to listen to... My friend, Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. With John Brown as Al and Life Erickson as Richard. Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conry. Music was by the Sportsman Quartet. Maury Webster speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.